I'm the Sound Tracker, and I wanted to talk today about 8-Tracks, and this is one that I'm actually super, super excited for because I've finally done it! i finally found the only working 8-Track player, and I am not kidding here, I have been through about 10 of these things, and all of them just had odd issues that I just either couldn't seem to fix, and one that I admittedly haven't even tried fixing yet because it's just, it's getting difficult to keep buying players and just have each and every one of them be broken. Now, my first player was actually one of those Panasonic plunger models. The volume knob snapped off inside of the machine. My next four were uh, uh, all different kinds of combo units. I'd had uh, two of them were 8-track slash record player with a nice stackable changer. They're, they're really cool devices. And uh, they also had a radio on the front. The only thing that worked on those was the radio. Uh, let's see, beyond that, uh, I had this uh, Sanyo unit, which ha was half cassette, half 8-track, and uh, there's a little plastic shell that holds the head in place so it can play a tape, and uh, the head shell had cracked, so it wasn't playing correctly because sound wasn't coming out right. And, let's see, beyond that, there was another 8-track player slash radio unit, just radio and 8-track. That one exploded. Delightful time I had with that one. And, uh, let's see, what was the other one? Ah, uh, uh, yes, so another one, uh, a co-worker gave one to me that uh, just kind of didn't run right because old. <sighs> and uh, so, uh, beyond uh, beyond getting discouraged, I wound up buying a couple more uh, Sanyo units. One of them had a messed up amplifier board, and the other one had another cracked head shell. Brilliant. So, upon the news that, one of, that I had the cracked head shell, I got one at a flea market recently, uh, under the brand name of Din, or D-Y-N, Dine, I don't know how to pronounce that. If, if, if you do, please give me some insight. Uh, it was an interesting name to come across because I've never heard of that one. But uh, after that uh, had its own issues with changing the head position properly, I finally found one inside of a reel-to-reel -reel that I fixed recently. All right, so we have the reel-to-reel -reel section on the front and the 8-track player housed in the side of the unit here. Now, the, now, all the transport controls for both of the tape decks are on the front of the unit, but the reel-to-reel -reel works fine. The problem is with the 8-track deck. The reel-to-reel -reel and the 8-track player both technically work, but I'm hesitant to use the 8-track player because, well, honestly, the head has marks on it as though it's heavily worn. Now, I have alcoholed and Q-tipped the ever-loving junk out of this machine, and I just can't seem to get the marks off of the head, so I'm pretty sure they're permanent, which is a real shame because this is a fully featured 8-track player with all of the bells and whistles that I would want from one, built into a reel-to-reel, -reel, which I've also been looking for forever. I have no idea what the hell I've done in my past life that Karma seeks to destroy me now in my quest for Stereo 8. But whatever it was, I hope that I enjoyed myself, because I'm suffering now, and I am trying to reach the plane of Dharma. In any case, despite all of the bad luck that I've had, I really want to give this format a chance. I have always, always wanted to know what an 8-track sounds like, and I might actually be close to that today. So. I mean, I've got plenty of tapes to play, some of them work, some don't, and usually they're uh, re uh, relatively easy to fix, uh, but anyway, let's have a look. Alright, so here's an 8-track tape. This is a pretty beefy and hard plastic design, and you can usually find these things really cheap. I mean, this is one of the reasons that I wanted to get them. Finding an album's worth of music for a good price is important to me, and I tend to enjoy music from this format's heyday, the 60s and the 70s. And, I mean, a lot of tapes that I've gotten have come from garage sales, record shops, and sometimes on eBay, but usually these things range from running perfectly to needing some form of repair. And the most common issue that I've, uh, that I've run into, anyway, is that the pressure pads need to be replaced. <sighs> That's issue one, anyway. Issue number two is on this tape. Either the pads are rotting off here, or the pinch roller has gone bad. When you play a tape, you insert it into the player, and the pinch roller presses firmly to the cap stand. This starts the tape moving, and the pressure pad presses hard against the head itself, so that the tape can be played properly. Now, if the foam is rotted, like in Led Zeppelin here, let me get behind this, it deteriorates, it crumbles, and it just plain comes apart. Now, this is not good. 
The foam, at best, will deteriorate the sound, but at worst, it's going to screw up your tape. This stuff can very, very easily be pulled into the 8-track itself just by virtue of how it operates. And that's just not good. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd, just, I'd like to get a little more life out of these things. So let's take a look inside one and see if we can fix them. Different manufacturers use different fastening techniques, and usually there's a hidden fastener somewhere on a tape. Uh, I got lucky with these two because they, all the fasteners are right out in the open, but in a lot of cases the tape will be folded over and you're not going to be able to see very much uh, just because they're hidden by the extra info they wanted to give you. It'll take a little bit of time and patience to open one up, and sometimes the tapes are a little bit brittle. I mean, the, the plastic is from the 60s and 70s, so it's no surprise, but I have had some good results applying a little bit of heat with a hairdryer to the surface and waiting for a little bit. Now, when the plastic is pliable enough, we're, we still have to be careful with um, how we get into these, and I'll show you why. Here we go. We're getting there. Now, I'll turn this over and keep trying at that one. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to be a little rough with them, and that's nerve wracking at the best of times. <laughs> Got it. All right, so the last one did wind up breaking off, but uh, there are, in this particular tape, five fastening points, and I just had a lot of trouble getting the last one off. Sacrificed another tool to it as well, which I'm very sad about. <sighs> All righty. So, anyhow, so there's five fastening points, and generally you just kind of want to nudge them to the side. It's just, it's a little hard to do because the, pr the plastic gets so brittle. But anyway, we got inside. And here we come to the reason that I was trying to be so careful in getting it open. Let me really quickly try and get all this back on here without messing something up. And this is precisely what I was trying to avoid because if things go really, really wrong, uh, you can also stand a good chance of having the entire tape unravel. And man, is that not fun to put back in. So let's get that back over here and that down there. Uh-huh, okay, much better. Now, let me pull you back around where you're supposed to be. There we go. And in this tape, that's how that one's supposed to be threaded. Uh, except that this is supposed to be inside of that, but we'll take care of that in a second. An 8-track tape is what's called a closed loop of tape. It plays only in one direction like this. There we go. Yeah. It takes tape from the inside of the reel, threading it in this direction, and then threading it back onto the outer reel like so. If you do decide to open one up, just be a little bit careful with it because the tape can very easily become unspooled from the reel. And it's very, very time consuming to get it back on, and in some cases, who knows if it'll even get back on properly. I mean, I've had to toss tapes before because the tape just went <laughs> If you did get this far though, awesome, because this means we're on the first step to fixing a tape. So this particular tape has this type of pressure pad, and I do want to see how well these are holding up, so I'm just going to take this out real quick. And what I want to see on this particular pad is how is it holding up over time? Is this going to peel off if I... No, it seems to be doing alright. Um, yeah, this, uh, the pad is old, but uh, it's still sticking to this thing pretty nicely. So I'm not going to bother with that, but I will show you another tape that I've got where I did actually have to replace the pads. And this one is just pretty well worn. So this is Machine Head by Deep Purple, and this tape got a lot of play. And you can see that because the tape itself is just nightmares of the wrong shade. I mean, it's got a whole lot of like different colored brown <laughs> and... I just, it doesn't look right. That's the whole point. But anyway, so the point is that I had to get in behind this and replace the pads at one point, and I would really recommend using uh, small furniture feet, because 
Those things were a lifesaver in trying to find a good sturdy pad. It worked well. This brings us to our other problem, though. The plastic pinch roller right here. Now, the pinch roller exists to help the tape pull along, and this one uh, snapped while I was playing it at one point. So I'd like to get another one of those in place. Now, I'm fortunate in that these things are usually pretty universal, so I'm hoping I'm going to have good luck with this other one that I just happen to have lying around from another broken tape. Guess how I figured out about the whole unspooling problem. So, let's see if this will fit in here. I really hope it does, and... Okay. So, it fits, but not quite well enough. The tape is still pretty high up, and I'm not expecting that to be a very good... Uh, pinch roller because it looks like it's supposed to fit in a different size 8 track. But if you look at it from here, you can see there is a whole bunch of pink under there, so there's a whole bunch of space where this just, if it's sitting down, is not going to do well as a pinch roller. So I'm going to try a different one and see what happens. So I do happen to have a baggie of extra pinch rollers on hand from other Dead 8 tracks, and at this point I do want to mention, people have been asking me where I get a lot of my repair stuff, and eBay. eBay is really my best resource for finding specific items like uh, belts or pads or, I mean, even pinch rollers like this. And I will also say that it's a great idea to ask around on, on like Facebook forums or uh, forums like Tapeheads and Audio Karma because a, a lot of people out there with a lot of expertise have been really good to me at least, and they've always been great about answering questions that I have, how to repair and such, you know. So let's see if this will work in place of that. And actually that fits really well. Okay, so I've got... Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. That is awesome. Okay, we are on our way here, and we've got a nice new old roller here, and the tape is going right up top against it. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to set the pressure pad back into its station. Perfect. And I'm going to spend an, abs an absurd amount of time trying to thread this tape back on here. And this this does actually have a specific way it's supposed to go. So inside of this little pla inside of this little plastic crevice here, uh, thread it around this thing, just in front of the roller, behind the plastic piece, in front of the pressure pad, behind the other plastic piece over here, in front of the pressure pad again, and it slipped. And this is why threading tape is time consuming, <laughs> because it likes to come back out at the worst possible time. So once I get this in, I'll just show ya. Okay, perfect. So I finally got it threaded on there properly, and just to show you a little bit closer and in more detail how it's actually supposed to be threaded, here we go. So to thread this particular tape, it's out of the center here, inside of this little sideways crevice right here, out, outside of the post, above the pressure pad, behind the plastic here, above the pressure pad again, behind the plastic here, past the pinch roller, and in front of this plastic bit so it can thread properly into the tape. So, once we've gotten that set up and about as tight as it can be, take the top, set it down very gently over top of it, and it should click into place. There we go. Perfect. And that's the first 8-track player we've had to fix. And that's... there we go. <laughs> now it's better. Alright. Awesome. So, yes is fixed. Okay, so let's take a look at our next tape. We've got Led Zeppelin over here. Awesome tape. I actually... I'm more fond of their second album than their first, but uh, th this one's just the one I happen to have on hand. <laughs> So, in this one we've got the dead pressure pads, let's get into this. And you can see here, we've got a different opening system than we have from the other one. Rather than it being a five point and kind of figure out which way to get into it, we've got the two clasps right here. So, let's see. Alright, so for starters we've got this here. 
And the plastic is feeling kind of brittle again, so hair dryer. Sassoon! All right. Plastic is warm to the touch, and hopefully that'll get it a little easier to open. Let's see. Ah, much better. Triple is really getting in behind the clasp because this thing is actually a nightmare to get behind because you have to kind of bend it one way, slip underneath, and then try pulling it apart that way. And that's for both of them. There we go. Now, being very careful not to have it unspool, let's see what we can do with the back here. This one, the trick is as deep as you can go. And then, a good jerk. There we go. Perfect, okay. All right, and so I never ever forget how to do that again. This particular one, since you insert it into the hole in the bottom, pushes back towards the back of the tape to open it. And this one here, when you push on the inside of this, this will both be happening from the bottom. You push in from the bottom of that to open this tape. First you push the back tab towards the back, and that will release the back of it. And you push the front tab also towards the back. The trouble is that these tabs are very, very stiff, and the heat helps a lot. Thank you. Alright, so now that we've almost destroyed another one, I'm going to put this back in. And I'm going to be very careful with the tape itself, because I quite like Led Zeppelin. Alright, there we go. Awesome, so we have the second tape open, the pinch roller is back in place, and what we really want to do is take a look at the plastic backer. So, get this tape a little further up here, and you can see the old foam is just gone. I mean, this is coming apart in my hands, and that's not good at all. So what I want to do is take this plastic backing strip and peel off all of the foam that I can, all right? Okay, so we've got that off to the side here. Next, I'm going to clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. I tend to find 91% is preferable, as this strip, I've got all the stuff off of it that I can. And here we go. Okay. Yeah, and you know, ton of years of crud. There we are. All right, give it a good wipe down. With that alcohol and ah, perfect. Okay, so that's that's nice and smooth. Or, well, in reality, the the surface of this thing is pitted, but it's just it, it's clean and it's not sticky, and that's the point. All right, so we've used our 91% alcohol, we've waited for this to dry off, and now comes the fun part, adding new pads. And I, again, I got these things off of eBay. They're really easy to find, and I mean, they're, they, they sell them in packs of 10, so you can realistically do 10 tapes. So let's get some of this nice sticky stuff off here. Let's peel that right there. All right, take the plastic backer and get it nice and even with the backing material, so let me just focus more of it on the play side. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then just press down gently. Give it a nice seal. And get the rest of these out of the way. So now that I've gotten the pressure pad on there, we're gonna put it right back in the tape. And it's that hard slash easy to fix a tape like this. So this slides right back into its base here. Okay. There we go. 
between the two notches. All right, perfect. So now that we've gotten the pressure pad back in, let's get the tape threaded back inside of the cartridge. Take my threading tool and start from where it's coming from the inner side. Bring it over here and around. And on this particular tape, I, I like this particular version of the sponge better because it's a little tiny bit easier to thread. And it's also just, I like this sponge better because I think it makes better contact with the head, but I'll get into that later. Uh, anyhow, so we've got this here. This goes out this way onto, uh, onto this lovely tighter area here. Out this way and behind that. And this is where the fun begins. So I'll start getting that in there. There we go. Huh. And gently. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So if that's our tape path. It comes out from the center, across this bar here, around this guide peg, across the front of the pressure pads here behind this little plastic peg and in front of the pinch roller where it will go around and back onto the outer rim. Let's see it happen. There we go, yep. Perfect. All right, awesome. And that means Led Zeppelin's fixed. All right, so the tapes are fixed, but we still need something to play them on. And luckily, I finally got in a player that works, and I'm super happy about that. So, 8-track players, they come in a range from low-featured to high-featured. Top one here being the lower-featured, the bottom one here being the higher-featured. And, unfortunately, the higher-featured one is one of the broken ones. So to give you an idea of just how enticing these things can be, this is one of the broken Sanyos, and it is a beautiful machine. I mean, look at this. This is exactly what I think of when I think of good hi-fi from the 70s. We have a record lever over here on the left. We've got clear indicators for everything. We've got a pause lever over here. A program selector over here to change tracks from 1, 2, 3, and 4. A restart button down here, which, frankly, I've never seen one of these on an 8-track before player before, so I mean, I don't really know what that one does. A fast forward button down here, and a one and all button. And the purpose of this thing is so that the tape will either stop after it completes one track on any of these and hit to tape end, or it will give continuous play of a tape. Now it's also just, it's got gorgeous meters and beautiful solid record knobs down here, and it doesn't work in the slightest. This one over here, from JCPenney, works. It's a simple unit. All this thing does is continuous play and change tracks with the selector button here. That's it. It doesn't fast forward, it doesn't record, it doesn't stop the tape by itself. It just plays over and over again, but at least it does that well. And let me show you how this thing works. I mentioned earlier that an 8-track tape is a continuous loop of tape inside of a cartridge. The loop of tape is divided into four stereo programs, listed on tapes in songs like this. Each stereo program takes two tracks, one for the left speaker and one for the right speaker. So four programs, two tracks per program, and that's what makes this an eight-track system. It's going by how many physical tracks of audio are on the tape itself. So when we put the tape in, it's very user-friendly and starts running right away. You can see from the inside here, the capstan and pinch roller are pulling the tape across the head, which presses against the pad to help the tape play properly. It's reading from program one right now, and what's awesome about this is that if you want to jump to another program, just hit the button, and wham, program two. This can also happen automatically with each rotation of the tape. The tape itself is held together by a foil splice, and when the foil passes by the connector point, it drops the head down and keeps playing. You might have guessed at this point that 8 tracks create a little bit of a logistical nightmare as well. Now, the usual runtime of an album is about 40 minutes long, and at first glance, that'd be fine. Just divide the tape itself into 10 minute segments and have everything be okay, right? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Not every song is exactly 5 minutes, and they get around this in a couple of ways. 
First, they rearranged the tracks on the album to make them more time efficient, and you can see that here on Moving Pictures. Where on most copies of the album, we'll go from Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, right into YYZ. Over here, we've got Tom Sawyer, Witch Hunt, and YYZ. Next, in some cases, they divide songs across tracks, which is kind of interesting to me. So they'll start off YYZ here, on program one. And with a head drop, go right back into it on program two to save tape. the format has its good points and its bad points, but I still really want to know, how do these things sound? And this is going to depend on a couple of things, you know, from how old are they, how are they stored, were they played a lot, is the player itself in good shape, and after years of looking, I'm ready. Let's listen to these things together. I spent some time listening to the tapes, a couple of the ones that I fixed, a couple of the ones that I just happened to have lying around, and I'm going into this kind of pie-eyed because I'm just really stoked to have a player that's actually working, and after going through so many that were just kind of dead on arrival, YES! I'm really excited about this. I am dying to hear the rest of them. I've got like 20, 30 some odd tapes out in the hall over there, and I can't really wait to, to get into listening to more of them. That being said, the tapes that you heard were audio captured from my computer, from my receiver's line out, and I think it sounded pretty okay. I mean, there, some tapes sounded a little more off than others, some were a little bit um, muffled in the treble and, and heightened in the bass, and whether that's down to the age of the tape or the, the even the positioning of the tape, uh, where the head makes contact with the tape, there are a lot of different factors to how sound quality uh, heightens or lessens on tape, and usually with eight tracks, it seems that um, it's down to the age, how often it was played, and where the head position is from recording and over to um, playback. There's a large jargony explanation involved with that, but the point is there's a lot of different factors that go into the way tapes sound the way that they do sometimes, and in order to get uh, the best possible sound out of it, everything kind of has to be perfect, and with eight tracks there's something of a margin of error. And you can hear that on the tapes. Some of them sounded a, a little bit more muffled in the high section, some of them sounded a little bit more bright, some of them uh, sounded uh, pretty wide and open, and that's kind of part of the fun of this for me, is, is finding out how an album that I know is supposed to sound is going to sound different based on the format that I'm listening to. Some of its quirks are growing on me. There was one uh, particularly interesting one that I found when I was listening to the ACDC tape. You can hear a little bit of the jack playing through on a, um, uh, on a, on a blank section of one of the tracks, and uh, I'll play that for you here.
The reason that that happens is something called crosstalk. The head itself isn't exactly in alignment with the tape, and I guess they either recorded that one too hot or the, uh, the recording head for that particular tape was just a little bit off, but either way, the reason you can hear that is because it's listening while it's listening to the particular track that it's supposed to be playing, it can hear things from the track above it. And that's pretty fascinating to find. <laughs> but other than that, it's it's a little bit jarring. Uh, one of the quirks that I, that I don't particularly like about it is having one of the songs fade out and then fade back in when it's changing tracks. I mean, I wish they'd have put maybe just a little bit more tape on it, but I get why they didn't. Overall, uh, the, the point is that this is just something that was really fun to actually be able to try out for the first time. And I'm looking forward to, to getting more tapes and to listening to them and maybe even seeing if I can find some other players that are working because having the one that does and having it be with the JC Penny branding on it of all things, I was really surprised about that one. Anyway, if you like this video, you know what to do. Thanks for watching.